Are you looking to get started in buy-to-let property investment? Well, in this video, we're gonna start with the basics, the basics of choosing your property investment patch. I'm gonna share with you the best areas to invest in the UK in terms of buy-to-let yield, the worst areas to invest. I'm gonna share with you how you should pick your gold mine area and stay tuned till the end and I'll give you a free app to allow you to crunch the numbers on your next buy-to-let property deal. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing in property for 30 years. Uh, welcome to this channel. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We put out new content each and every week, and it's all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. So what are we talking about in this video? Now, a big mistake new investors often make is to chase cheap areas. Great, you can buy a 50 grand property way up north and it looks as though the yield is looking good, but that may not make the best long-term property investment. Let's go to the board and let me explain some concepts. So when you invest in buy-to-let property, there are basically two ways that you're going to achieve a return. One is through capital appreciation and rental yield. Capital appreciation is of course the amount that the property goes up in value for the time that you hold it. Rental yield is uh, basically the return you make from the rental income that it generates. And the way that's calculated is the annual rent divided by the value of the property expressed as a percentage gives you your rental return over the year. Now here's the thing with capital appreciation and rental yield. In expensive, area, in, in expensive areas or high value areas, um, you tend to find you get a lot of this, but not much of this. And conversely, in cheapo areas, you end up with quite a lot of this rental yield, but virtually none of capital appreciation. Now here's the thing, a lot of new investors get attracted by the cheap areas. Hey, I can buy a 50 grand property somewhere up north. And they also get attracted by the fact that the yields seem relatively high. But the thing is, they don't go up in value. There are places in the UK that have, that have appreciated very, very little, if at all, in the last decade. Now, why is that? Well, basically, because they're shitholes. But let's define from a property investor perspective what a shithole actually is. A shithole is a place which has decreasing population uh, and poor employment prospects. Now, those do not make great investment areas simply because you struggle to attract satisfactory tenants. Conversely, what make good investment areas are places where you've got rising population, uh, you've got good employment prospects, and of course, where you've got good state schools. But th because those tend to be neighborhoods where families and people want to live. Property prices, uh, rental demand, rental yield, long-term growth prospects tend to be good in those sort of areas. And guess what? Those sort of areas don't tend to be either the most expensive or the cheapest. They tend to be the Goldilocks areas, which are sort of slap bang in the middle. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. So strictly from a yield perspective, these are some of the highest, the top 10 highest yielding uh, towns in the UK. Now, when you invest in these sort of towns, you've got to remember that your return is coming largely from this and not so much from rising 
uh, price. You've also got to bear in mind that the average UK house price is hovering around the 250k mark. So in all these towns, the prices, the average prices are significantly below the national average. Now here is one of the problems of investing in low value areas for the long term. The thing is that over time, not much happens to the average price in that area. Uh, you are making rental yield, which does seem great in the short term. But the problem is when you've owned the property for seven or eight years, uh, pro rental properties tend to need a major refurb. You, the kitchen gets tired, the bathroom gets tired, it needs a lick of paint, then it needs a new boiler and so on and so forth. Now the trouble is that when you have to face that seven, eight year refurbishment cycle, where do you get the money from? Well, that money is coming from saving up, if you like, your rental yield over the years. So then all of a sudden, these great figures don't actually appear that great. The other issue, of course, is getting some money out of the property deals that you do. Now, a big strategy for buy to let investors is refinancing. So as your properties grow in value, you take some of the increased equity that you're building up out by refinancing the property uh, every few years. Now that's a great strategy as long as you've got something to refinance. Now in low value areas, if your property is just going up say five, six thousand pounds in four or five years, then you haven't really got anything to refinance because the costs of refinancing, remortgaging your property and raising more capital out will probably outweigh the benefits of doing so. Now here are the top 10 lowest yielding places to uh, do buy to let in the UK. And you can see here that the yields are abysmal. In fact, they're not even inflationary really, are they? I mean, it's, uh, it's not much at all. So where are your returns gonna come from? Your returns are gonna largely come from the fact that um, in higher value areas, the capital appreciation tends to be higher. But in all honesty, Neither of these top 10 towns are the ones that you should be investing in because they are both at the extremes. If you're getting value out of this video, make sure you like, uh, smash that like button. It means more people get to see this video. Also subscribe to the channel so you see more of the content and also tell me what you think in the comments below. Stay tuned till the end and I'll share with you a special app that you, so which helps you calculate uh, whether a buy to let investment areas right for you. That's all coming up. So what I've got a, a list of here is some Goldilocks towns where you get a nice little balance between um, capital growth and uh, rental yield. Now, the thing is not to just dive into any of these places on the list. Now, the important thing is to try to find somewhere to invest, which is reasonably close to where you live. Now, my recommendation is to stay within an hour's commuting distance of where you live. Now, yes, you may be involving a management agent, a local letting agent to help you, but you still need to be present at some times. And when you're starting out, it's best to have that uh, proximity to your initial investments to, be, to begin with. So of course, any buy to let property deal that you do has to stack up and it has to stack up on the figures. Now that's why we have put together this amazing app, this amazing buy to let deal analyzer app, and you can get hold of this absolutely free. Now, what it allows you to do is very, very simple to use. Uh, you basically punch in the, you're at the top, you've got some metrics if you like, with, and these things are just worked out for you. Um, of course, you punch in uh, the details of the property that you're buying. Um, now you're gonna be buying below market value or using the Brewer method, and we've talked about um, that in other videos. So you'll have a purchase price and a property value, uh, which will be different, hopefully. You'll have an expected market rent that you're looking to achieve, um, all your, uh, buying costs um, like stamp duty and closing costs you can enter in here. Uh, you may have a little bit of a refurb uh, budget. Uh, you'll have a certain loan to value that you'll be um, looking to raise in terms of a buy to let mortgage and you'll also uh, have your uh, mortgage interest 
costs that you can put in and also your monthly um, maintenance costs and all the rest of it. And you can put in some assumptions. There's plenty of data you can get on the net as to how your area has performed over the last 10 years in terms of capital appreciation. Now, although, of course, past performance is no indicator of the future, but you can make some assumptions and put in those sort of figures on this side to get your long-term metrics. And hey presto, you get a good analysis of a deal from just punching in some very, very simple data. We've also got a flip analyzer. If you're looking to do a buy to, uh, not a buy to let, but a buy, do a quick refurbish and then flip it on. We've also got an analyzer to help you analyze those deals too. Now the best news of all, of course, is that both these apps are yours absolutely free. You can use them as much as you like for as long as you like and it's completely free. Um, there's a link on the bottom of the screen for you to go and register and you can access these apps um, for your deal, uh, buy to let deals and also for your flip deals. Uh, lifetime access is absolutely free. Uh, all I ask is that you give me your feedback on how you found these apps for your purposes. So go follow the link below. We'll put it in the description as well. Get on there, register, and use these apps to analyze your own property deals. Now that's all for this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell icon because we'll be doing more videos to uh, educate you on the basics of buy to let and how to get the best out of these free apps as well. So stay tuned. See you guys in the next video.